So people have been asking us how we get on with this awning. Well, I've got to say we used it extensively all this year and I've got to say it has held up really, really well. And I don't know if you can see it because I've got the, the brightness pecked right up on the camera here, but the awning is fairly dark. Um, because it's such a thick, solid roof, it doesn't let a lot of light in. Um, and the windows are great, but they're all tinted. So it does mean the awning is quite dark. So my solution for it is to build some ingenious lighting arrangements inside the awning uh, based upon what I did in the air awning, but this one's going to be just a little bit different. Okay, so fast forward three weeks and this is our awning pole, as you can see here. This goes into the roof construction and uh, it's very simple. We've got an adjustable bracket here and this piece slides in and out to take up the slack of the awning pole. Pretty much the same as any other awning pole you might get uh, depending on the construction type of course. So obviously with this awning pole, this length here always stays the same, uh, which is an absolutely perfect place to fit some LED lighting. Now, when you purchase LED lights, they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but let's just go through some very fundamental basics of the LED lights. You'll see here that they come in a long strip and uh, you can see here, there's some copper pads here, which is a place that allows you to cut this strip down to your preferred length. There's a couple of important numbers as well when you're talking about LED strips as well, um, and those refer to the dimensions. These ones here are 3528s, and there's another type called 5050s, and all that refers to is the actual size of the LEDs. So these are quite small, and the reason why I've chosen the smaller LEDs is to get more of them in the strip, which is absolutely perfect for what we want to do. Now connecting these up couldn't be simpler. All you need to do is feed 12 volts into the system. And there we go, they light up beautifully. As you well know, they're very low power, so they won't consume a lot of power. So it means that you've got lots of flexibility as to how you wire these up yourself. So these LED lights themselves, they're going to be affixed to the bottom of our pole, which is here. They're just going to fix straight in across here. But instead of fixing them straight to the awning pole themselves, I'm actually going to create some acrylic tubes. Now this is based upon a system that I generated in the air awning we used to own. And I created three tubular sections with acrylic tubing. And this is the acrylic tube here. And as you can see, it works quite well. And what we actually did is we mounted the LEDs inside the acrylic tubing and then this then hung from the air awning. Now I'm going to use the same principle, but instead of hanging from the um, air awning, these are actually going to be hanging from the poles. It means that they're temporary. It means that I can pull them off and I can move them around the awning. So they're not going to be permanently stuck to the actual poles. So what do we need to actually make this work? Well, obviously we need the LEDs. We need a couple of caps either end of the acrylic tube. I'm using a socket. I'll discuss that in a moment. And obviously the acrylic tube. Now for actually mounting the LEDs inside the acrylic tube, what we're going to use is some foam board. And I'll show you that when we come around to actually doing it. So the first job that we need to go and do is we need to go and create and wire up an end cap, something like this. So let's go and have a look and see how we do that. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to mount our DC socket into one of the end caps for the lights. This gives us the ability to unplug it and plug it back in. And it also gives us flexibility for moving the LEDs around to different locations in the awning. Now, because it's being fitted into the end cap, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the nut off of the actual socket. And we're going to drill a hole into the end cap slightly smaller than what is required. So in this case, a 7.5 mil hole. And we're then going to thread this power socket into the end cap and connect it up from there. Now when we solder our cables onto the connector, you'll notice that the two terminals at the back of the uh, socket, one is slightly larger than the other. Well in this case, the long terminal is always the negative and the short one is always the positive. So in a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to tin the uh, connections on the socket. We're also going to tin the connections on the cable and then we're just gonna solder the cable onto the socket and I'm also going to do an extra step of putting on some heat shrink as well to completely cover the terminals and make sure they're nice and protected. 
Now what we're doing here is we're just soldering the terminals on the socket and we're tinning the connections on the cabling as well. So I've just put the heat shrink onto the cable here. Now it's time to affix the cable onto the socket, remembering which one is negative because I've got two different colored heat shrinks here. So I want to make sure that the black heat shrink goes onto the longer terminal. So let's fix that one on now. Push the heat shrink up onto the terminals. This also gives us a good mechanical joint as well. It will stop anything coming apart um, if it was under any stress. These won't be under any stress, so it'd be absolutely fine. Now I'm just using a hot air gun here just to shrink down the heat shrink, and that just forms a nice tight connection for the terminal and the cable. Now it's time to fit the cable onto the end cap. So I've got a small hole here, not exactly center, I think you'll agree. And I'm going to just drill this out now with a seven and a half mil drill point here. And I'm gonna start nice and slowly. There we go. Now this is just slightly smaller than the actual uh, DC socket itself. And it then means that I can then thread this in beautifully like so. And it will tighten up as we get down a bit further. So what I'm going to do is it tightens up there. I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers just to help. And there we go, that's one end done. Two more to make. Okay, so step two, we're going to now prepare the foam board. So what I need to do here is cut two strips per light, uh, simply because I haven't got enough foam board here to make it with one continuous piece, but it's not a problem. So the foam board is going to be 15 mil wide, and the total length I'm gonna need here is 970 millimeters, literally just under a meter long. So now I have my two pieces of foam board, it's time to now start working out where everything is going to fit. Now the LED strips come in a form that allows you to cut them down at regular intervals. Now in this case, they, you can cut the LEDs down at every third LED. And there is a very clear cut mark on the actual strip itself. And all you need to use is just a nice pair of scissors and you can cut straight through it. Now once it's cut, we need to remove some of the waterproof membrane off the top of the LEDs. So just to do this, I just loosen it up with a craft knife and then very gently peel it away from the LED strip. So once it's uh, stripped back, what we're going to do is we're going to use our soldering iron again and we're going to tin the actual connections. So with our markings of 15 mil from the end of the um, foam board, all we need to do now is just do a dry run, make sure that everything looks good and remove the protective backing off the back of the LED strips, which is self-adhesive, and we can then start affixing these LEDs to this track. Now, it's crucial that you take your time because you've got one chance at this. If you make a mistake, you've really got to start all over again. So what I do is I very gently put it in place at one end. I haven't removed all the protective backing at this point, And then I just gently push one end down like so, form it out nice and straight, what I do is I just press once down so it's not really fixed down so I just press in a couple of places gently so it's not fixed all the way down and then that is one half of the foam board now fixed and all we need to do now is butt up the other end to that end you see I've just started to make a mistake there so I've just been able to just pull it back and that's because I hadn't pushed it down yet but believe me, once it's stuck down, it's stuck down. But what I'd need to do now is just work out where I need to fit the plug. And what you can see here is that I've cut the cabling down. So that just fits on nicely at the end there. So I'm just gonna solder this in place. Remembering that the positive needs to go to positive and I've just bent the cables up a little bit here just to help uh, the soldering. As you can see there, everything is really nicely flush. So if I put the plug there and I'm gonna just apply some heat to the terminals. And I'm sorry you can't see that. It's a bad camera angle, I know. Now 
and it's the time to just test it and make sure it works okay. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to feed the uh, LED strip down on the backing into the acrylic tube, being nice and gentle with it, we don't want to force anything here. And as soon as it's in, we're just going to close up the end with the cap, pushing that in so it's nice and flush. And then doing the same at the other end, we're just going to apply another cap at the bottom end of the acrylic tube, and that then seals everything up. And that is one light finished. And there we go guys, that is it. That's the construction of the awning lights for you today. Um, I've made three of these up uh, because that's what I want in our awning. They're gonna be hung from the awning rail like so. I think you agree that looks quite neat. It's temporary. I'm not sure I like the way it's hanging to be honest with you. Um, I'm gonna work out something a bit nicer and a bit better looking I think. These are just elastic bands at the moment so I think I might come up with a, a better solution. I don't want anything uh, rigid or hard at all because of the roof. Uh, and the way it interacts with the, the poles. So maybe you're asking yourself, why bother making all the lights up yourself? Why don't you just go and buy a kit and install it and off you go? Well, the fact is the kits are available and they're very, very good, but here's the breakdown on the cost. Everything that I've purchased to make all of these lights up cost me 39 pounds and 85 pence. That's everything. That's the power adapter, the cabling, the lights, the acrylic tubes. Um, the everything I needed, every little thing I needed to make these lights up. Total cost, £39.85. The link to all of the things I've used, by the way, is down in the description below. To go and buy one kit, um, and I'm thinking of the Camper Sabre light system, to go and buy one light is £39. In fact, I've seen it for £49 in some retailers. And then on top of that, you then need to purchase a supplementary add-on kit. And another one so the total cost is going to be around about 90 pounds by the time you finish to have three lights in the same configuration as what I'm making here so when you break it down in cost alone it's taken me an hour to make one light um, so it's three hours of my time during the winter months when I'm not going to be doing anything else so it's not costing me any great deal of time the total cost is as I said 39.85 and if you break it down per light, it works out to be £13.28. Now, the thing is, is that there's enough kit here to make five sets of lights. Because I've got five metres worth of LEDs, and because of the way that everything was packaged up, it was in packs of five, I've actually got enough here to make five sets of these lights. Which basically means the cost comes down again to about £7.97. So it's something worthwhile thinking about. You can obviously make this even cheaper again. You don't necessarily need to put them in the acrylic tubes, which I have done. You could just literally put the LED lights onto the awning rails and the awning poles, and that would be absolutely fine. But I wanted to make something that was comparable to a retail kit. And also, those tubes are fairly waterproof as well, so if I want to, I can put them outside and uh, move them about. If you stick them straight to the awning rails themselves, obviously you can't take them off and move them around. So uh, there we go. So any questions, feel free to ask, put them down below, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any queries that you have. Um, I hope this has been an enjoyable one for you today. Slightly different video, I suppose, um, of us making stuff together. I've got lots of other projects that I'm going to make as well over the next few months, in the winter months, uh, ready for when we start caravanning again in the spring. So um, there we go, guys. I hope that's been of interest to you. And until next time, guys, we'll speak to you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.